Welcome to the fifth video in the Fortitude.tech Python package walkthrough. In this video we will be going through an example that uses the time series simulation that follows with this package. As usual we start at the front page of the repository and then navigate to examples. So here you can see that example number four is called time series and this is the one that we will be going through. So an important point about this time series simulation is that it contains a total of 5040 observations. The idea is to mimic 20 years of historical daily data with 252 trading days. The data consists of an equity time series, a time series for a government bond curve, an implied volatility surface for options written on the equity, um, and then finally a credit spread for corporate bonds. An important point about this simulation is that it uses stochastic differential equations and have been hand calibrated by me. So the point is that although it has some real world characteristics, so for example that the equity index will be negatively correlated with the implied volatility, then it's still not a really good approximation of real world market data. But the idea is that you can use this time series simulation to validate your risk modeling. Because if you are not able to achieve good approximations of the statistical properties in this data and good generalization, then it's also unlikely that the method that you use will work on real world data, which after all is much more complicated than the stochastic differential equations that I've used in this case. I would also say that my experience is that if you want to generate a really high dimensional uh, simulation for many, many different risk factors, then stochastic differential equations are not flexible enough to do that. So you probably would need to use some other approach uh, to be able to, to get something realistic. Okay, so here we just start by importing the packages that we need. And in this case, it's just NumPy for the sure take package and then matplotlib. So here uh, we have a function called load time series and basically it returns a pandas data frame with all these 5040 observations. So here we just print uh, the first 10 observations to see how they look. So you can see here that you have the equity index in the first column and then you have uh, the zero coupon curve. So this is the maturities that you have with one month, three months, six months, and one year. Uh, in the end, you can see that you have the same thing, but just for the credit spreads. In between this data, uh, you will have uh, data for an implied volatility surface that uh, we will see uh, a bit later. All right, so the first thing we do is just uh, to plot the data. And here we start with the equity uh, time series. So this looks like something that could be S&P 500 or something like that. After that, we define a function for plotting uh, zero coupon curves and input the maturities that are in this data. So here you can see that we plot a zero coupon curve for the first day. So this is index zero. And then you can see that this is a curve that has a positive slope. But uh, if we go to day uh, 2100, then you can see that uh, the interest rate curve can also be inverted. Uh, so this is just to illustrate that uh, in the time series simulation that there will be cases where the slope is not positive. Then uh, after that, uh, we plot some uh, implied volatility surfaces. And for the implied volatility surfaces, because we plot them in other examples also, we have this function called plot vol surface. So you basically just uh, give the implied volatility uh, data and then uh, an index and then it will generate a plot. So then you, you look at this and then this looks like something that you could see in, in the real world um, from maturities up to two years. And then here we just uh, show you another example of the shape of the implied volatility surface that can be generated and this is index 1000. So finally, we go to the credit spreads uh, and again, uh, we, we give it some maturities and make a small function here. So we can see that the first credit spread actually is inverted. So you can imagine that this is uh, 
corporate bonds with different maturities written on this uh, equity index. Um, and then you can see that the, the slope can also be positive uh, for the credit spread here. All right. So finally, uh, we um, we end with an option price and example. And this is really to illustrate to you that all the data, which is credit spreads and interest rate curves, have been given in percentage terms. So when you want to price something, uh, then you need to divide by 100. Um, yeah, for everything to work. So first, uh, we uh, we try to do some option pricing using the option pricing functionality uh, that we have. Uh, and here we just start with index zero, so that's the first day. But you can of course change it to something else and, and see uh, yeah the price that you get. So we extract the spot price, we extract uh, the interest rate for one year maturity, then we assume a um, 0% uh, dividend uh, rate uh, and then we specify the maturity at one year. Uh, here we use the forward function to compute the forward price and then we extract the implied volatility surface for the one year maturity at the money forward. So here we then use the call option the put option uh, functions that we have uh, so this is uh, options that are have one year maturity and strike at the money forward. Um, the important point is that um, these options should have the same price. And this is something that uh, that you can show when you use the put call parity. And actually, I've heard some people say that this is an interview question that they get. So when the price of a put and a call option will be the same, and then you can say that when they both have a strike equivalent to the forward price. Um, yeah, so you can convince yourself that this is correct by looking at the put call parity. After that, we try to price uh, some options where um, the strike is a bit higher, just to see how it looks. So here, we uh, we print first uh, the call price and then the put price, and then finally we use the put call parity just uh, to verify uh, that uh, that we get uh, the same price, because of course uh, we we should do that. Okay. So by now, hopefully, it's um, clear to you uh, what this data contains and some of the things that you can do with it. Uh, in the later examples, we will be using it, um, but then otherwise, uh, you can try to see if you can do some risk modeling and capture the dynamics and simulate maybe one or two years uh, into the future. All right, so this is the end uh, of the walkthrough of the fourth example. and. Um, as always, if you enjoy uh, this package and if you enjoy these videos, then I encourage you to give the GitHub repository a start. And then I'll see you in the next video.